In our last video, we covered five mistakes that newcomers to solar energy often make. Now, I didn't get to put all of my ideas in it though, and that's why we've come up with part number two, five more mistakes that you should avoid when getting a solar system. Hey, my name is Jason, and let's just start with mistake number six, which is ordering delivery for a few panels from far away. It's more of a risky move, really. You see, the problem with transporting solar panels is that they sometimes break. The risk of damage by itself is small, uh, maybe it's one uh, to two orders in a hundred when this happens, but the fewer panels you order, the higher the risk of damage. It increases even further if you order from a faraway place and the carrier has to travel a long distance. Now this is something that the RMA department of our shop, A1 Solar Store, has discovered. So what is the solution? Well, first, try not to order delivery from shops that are far away, further than 2,000 to 2,500 miles from you. Second, just keep in mind that a bigger system with more panels is a safer bet in that regard, and it's often a better long-term investment. You can even add a couple of spare panels to your order as a possible replacement in the future, just in case. If you need less than 10 panels, don't order delivery. At A1 Solar Store, you can choose to pick up the order yourself from one of many fulfillment centers that we have across the US and drive it home safely. Mistake number seven, installing panels on an old roof. If you want to put a solar system on top of your house, the roof must be strong enough for it. And that's why when you hire a contractor to install a system for you, the first thing you'll do is check the roof. If it's weak, you're going to have to reinforce it or replace it. Otherwise, the authorities will never approve the installation and you will not get the permit. When some do-it-yourself guys install a PV system on an old leaky roof, it is a grave mistake. Why? Well, because in 10 years they'll have to replace the roof anyway. But they'll also have to detach the panels from the old roof and then put them on a new one. It'll just be very expensive. And by doing this, you put your solar system and your house at risk of damage. If you feel like your roof is getting old and it will last you maybe a decade or so, replace it before installing solar. Solar panels last for over 25 years. A system on top of a new roof will prolong its lifespan because it acts as a, as a shield against heavy rains, hail and harsh winds. Mistake number eight, adding batteries just in case. Why do solar owners get batteries? Well, if solar energy is all that you rely on, then batteries are essential for using appliances at night and on cloudy days. When you have a commercial grid, batteries can provide an uninterrupted power supply, which means that you won't lose power during outages. And that can be important when you work from home and can't risk losing power even for a few minutes. Or if the grid in your area is old or unstable and outages are just too common to bear. A hybrid inverter can also draw power from a battery in the evening when a solar system doesn't produce enough and utility rates are higher and you save money that way. While a battery makes your home more sustainable, it does increase the cost of your solar system one and a half to two times and makes the payback period even longer. Therefore, you really have to think twice before adding energy storage. The worst idea would be to buy a battery and put it into the garage for a rainy day. Batteries are meant to be used and doing nothing with them negatively impacts their lifespan, especially when we talk about lead acid batteries. Another important part of the solar system that is often overlooked is the wiring. And here's mistake number nine, using small wires. Solar panels don't come with a lot of wires and it's up to you or your installer to choose them. It's not part of an installation where you should cut corners, but some still try. Again, you won't get your system approved with the wrong wiring. And if you use a wire that is too small for your panels, you risk starting a fire. The right gauge depends on the current, voltage and configuration of your system. Usually you see 10 AWG cables in a solar system, but here's a tip. Instead of getting the size that just barely fits your system, buy thicker wires, preferably the biggest size that works for your installation. Yes, it will be more expensive, but the system will become more flexible. Maybe you decide to add new panels or rewire some things, perhaps add batteries or a new inverter. Always use copper wires and not aluminum or copper clad aluminum ones. Pick stranded wire and not a solid one. Color code your wires. It makes it easy to understand the system and it pleases the fire department to no end if they come to visit. The last mistake that I'd like to mention is not setting up a monitoring system. You see, 
a monitoring system helps you keep track of how your PV installation works. Solar energy is variable, which means that the production of your solar system is going to vary from day to day. Your energy yield will be lower when it's cloudy and, of course, in winter. Usually, it's an inverter that collects and stores the data about the production of your system. Inverters from brands like Enphase or Solar Edge have mobile apps for your smartphone which let you control the system remotely. If your system includes a battery, a charge controller measures its charge, voltage and temperature. Plus, some companies offer power monitors as standalone devices. A monitoring system is the first thing that tells you when something's wrong. If production drops, the monitoring system shows it. It is especially important for off-grid installations when you rely solely on solar power. It's better to start tracking the output from the very beginning so that you have a log that you can then refer to if needed. And that's it, five more mistakes and, well, 10 in total. If you missed part number one, go and check it out now. The link is in the description below. Please share your thoughts in the comments and tell us if we missed anything. We'd be very happy to hear about your own experiences with solar as well. Go and pop it in the comments. Also go and check out our blog and our socials. We write about solar energy and what we learned about with it daily. And that's it from me. I'm Jason and we'll see you soon next time. Bye-bye.